The topic that we're going to be speaking today about is the finance of healthcare in the U.S. and how it limits consumer choice and competition. Take it away. Dr. Bai is a Ph.D. CPA engineer, bachelor's in Japanese, professor of accounting at the John Hopkins Carey Business School and Health Policy and Management at the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, an expert on healthcare of accounting, financing, policy, she has testified in Congress, written on the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, published her studies in leading academic journals, such as the New England Journal of Medicine, JAMA, and Health, Air, Health Affairs. Her work has been widely featured in the media and cited in regulations and congressional testimonies. She was a visiting scholar at the Health Analysis Division of the Congressional Budget Office. She teaches graduate courses and has received the John Hopkins Alumni Association Excellent Teaching Award. She has served as an expert witness in litigation, arbitrations, and provided consulting services to the investment community. She regularly writes for Forbes. Welcome, Dr. Uh, Bai. What a phenomenal life story you have. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Bravo and Dr. Rugo. This is a huge yeah. honor for me. Dr. Bai, how does one go from getting a bachelor's in Japanese language to engineering, to becoming an expert in healthcare economics in the U.S. Thank you. Uh, the bachelor's degree in engineering and Japanese literature in China, that's a combined degree. Uh, I had ne never been exposed to healthcare at all uh, until I came to United States, entered the doctoral program in Michigan State University, books on accounting. At that time, when I was interest in using good data to answer accounting questions. But good data is very limited for governance, board members, board member background for nonprofit organizations. Then hospital it became such a great, rich setting because in California, at that time, California hospitals disclosed their board background. So I used that data to answer accounting question. But then it opened the door for me to this fascinating world of healthcare. Then it's really by accident. I got interested in healthcare because of the data uh, exposure. Then I, ever since I, I got you know more and more uh, deep into this field, and it's just so much fun. I, I do not want to go to any other field <laughs> for research. Wow, wow! I want to level set a little bit because even though our audience is mostly pediatricians and physicians, and we live and breathe this every day, these problems, we don't really understand the macro picture. What are we spending on healthcare and who is paying in the US? We spend right now the trillion dollars on healthcare. That is solely paid by taxpayers and American workers. So people might say, oh, it's actually paid by employers. Look at the employer sponsored health insurance. I would say no, uh, because in employers are acting as fiduciary to take a portion of our salary away put into this benefit administration and then they serve as a fiduciary to manage the healthcare benefit. In other words, they buy insurance for us, they manage the money for us. As a result, we have a lower take-home pay, but in exchange we get the insurance managed by our employer. So that's how it works. But then you might say Medicare, Medicaid are government programs. So it's not paid by us. Government money always comes from taxpayers, either diseased, alive, or to be born. Yes. So the numbers are staggering, right? It's reaching 18 to 20% of GDP. Yes. And commercial insurance, which is a misnomer. So commercially paid finance of healthcare in the U.S. accounts for over 1.3 trillion or 30%. Medicaid accounts for over eight hundred billion or twenty percent, and Medicare for almost a trillion or twenty two percent of our cost. So that leads me to the next question: Is does the U.S. have a working health insurance market? I would say it's highly dysfunctional. Why? If it's a good uh, system, I would say the performance should be making everybody relatively healthy and then using limited resources. But, but we're 
really compromising <laughs> uh, our patients on both fronts. Number one, we are really not seeing excellent health outcomes, right? If we compare with other developed countries. Second, we are spending so much money and th there are different numbers, but I think there's consensus that there is huge uh, wasteful spending in our healthcare system, meaning that only a portion of the trillion trillion spending is actually helping our patients. And many of the, you know, the dollars spent are for, I would say, uh, irrelevant or actually detrimental purposes. And, and so from uh, comparing this to a true insurance market, for example, my auto insurance or my home insurance, the uh, healthcare companies that manage the transactions, because they're really not insurance companies, they're in the business of managing transactions and managing net, uh, physician networks like United Healthcare, Aetna, Cigna, Humana, Oscar Health. Um, they have maybe four major buckets. Medicare Advantage, which became the shiny object that everybody chased for big dollars. Medicaid MCOs, which is in many states just a pretty fairly simple contract. In New York, the state of New York pays United Healthcare $200 per child per month that they manage the cost of those kids. And they give them in the contract, they stipulate what services they must provide. And then they get then United Healthcare does United. So they're not at risk for those dollars. 